right, what is up everybody? Today's video, we're going to be comparing what you get when you spend $100,000 on a BMW and what you get when you spend $6,000 on a BMW. First, let's start off with a $100,000 BMW because this thing is insane. It is a 2023 BMW M3 competition, 50th year anniversary, I think. I got it right. All right, so let's get into it. All right, I got to correct myself. It is a 50th edition M3. Yeah. Yeah. So here's what a $100,000 BMW key looks like. And since this is the Jare 50th edition or 50th year edition, you do get this special edition wheels. And when you come in the car right here, you open it up, you do get the 50th edition Yara BMW. And the biggest thing about the special edition is you get the interlogus blue, which this color looks absolutely beautiful. And it's one in five colors for this car. A little bit more about the body. It does come with carbon fiber wrapped exhaust tips. Very, very neat. This nice diffuser. And it does have this nice carbon fiber duck bill. Love that the badges are blacked out. M3 competition. It does come with the carbon fiber roof. Very, very, very nice. And one thing I love about the M3s, this car does come with like a pretty wide fender. I don't believe it is wider than the previous version of the M3, but it does have like a nice wider fender same as this fender right here it is a lot wider than i believe the other three series you can see the hole in the front bumper where the air channels through here a little bit of a carbon fiber lip right here so when these versions of the car first came out everybody on the internet hated them i personally absolutely love these m's they're my favorite m's this type of bmw and that style of bmw that we're going to talk about in a little bit are my two favorite types of bmw that grill on the front end looks absolutely amazing on the m's on the regular it looks a little bit weird but this car looks super aggressive. They did change up the hood. They now have like these two indents going down. You got the nice indent in the very middle that flows down to the BMW emblem. It does bring laser headlights. I don't know what that means, but they're really nice. <laughs> the power plant of this car is an S58. It pushes 500 horsepower and about 480 pound foot of torque. This is a 3.0 liter twin turbo in line six. Um, the car's completely stock as well as the 335i that's over here. We're gonna talk about that later, but this is a great comparison because both cars are stock. So it's a little startup. Oh wait, I can't really get here because that's where the one is. The startup button is right here. So right here you, that's low. That's up. And that's, that's louder. And that's louder. I think the car for stock sounds pretty good. Do you feel like it should be louder or no? I don't like how they sound when they're loud. They kind of sound raspy. Okay, good. okay. So this is the iDrive 8 display. When I first saw the car at the Cards and Coffee, um, I had no idea the screen was like this. It's insane, I absolutely love the screen. It goes from when the driver starts to the beginning of the passenger side. So this side's more like for infotainment, and then this one you get the RPMs and the miles per hour on the left side. Okay, so I'm looking at a little button right here. What exactly does this button do? That's your heated steering wheel. So you get a heated steering wheel. Have you tried it? Yeah. Okay, I'm gonna turn on. Hopefully it gets hot while the time we're in here, but. You do have these nice carbon fiber paddle shifters. So it has an M1 and M2 button. These, I would think of it as preset buttons. So if you click where it says setup, here you can choose uh, if you want the engine to be sport, sport plus, efficient, the chassis comfort. And when you have all the nice settings that you want, I'm sure you click down the M1 or M2, configuration one or two, and that's how your car would drive. So if you want to have M2 as comfort mode, oh my God, the steering wheel's heated now. Dude, that's so sick. I've never seen a car with heated uh, steering wheel. If you go to road, the map shows up, which is very, very cool. Kind of reminds me of the Audi R8. I love the map that they have in the middle. It's like a little cubby, and it does say M3 Edition 50 Yarem. One out of 500. You click on parking. Check this out. There's a 3D view of my car, of this car. You can even see the car on the side, but what's cool is that if you twist this little wheel, you can actually go around the car. Look, that's my 335 right there. The technology in these cars are absolutely incredible. So there's something called backup assistant. I'm not sure what it does, Elliot says it'll back up for us. My foot is on the brake. I'm not pressing the accelerator. A little bit of gas. Oh my goodness. It's gonna go back the way we came. Oh my goodness. <laughs> and it's counting down how many feet it will do it. Touching anything right now. I'm genuinely scared. All right, that's enough, that's enough. Wow, so the car backs up where you came from. Yeah. Hey BMW, tell me a story. Just a moment. I have found these five entries. Which one should I select? Bro, it thought I said Astoria. Try again. This thing's racist, bro. It's because I'm Hispanic, that's why. At the International Motor Show in 1990, BMW presented a completely new solution in the... Hey BMW, your story sucks. All right, so obviously you get a car, it has back seats, you gotta test them out. Oh, you also get nice little lighting right here. I don't know if you guys can see that. So on the seatbelts, you do get M-stitching. Um, The seatbelt click, 
very nice smooth click. I give that click a good 10 out of 10. All right, and the really cool thing about this car is you can, one, two, three. You can start it up with the key and to just show you guys, there's nobody in the car, nobody in there. So that's very, very cool. <laughs> Okay, now the best for last fall, it rains a lot. We're going to talk about my 2007 BMW 335i. A little bit of a really cool backstory. This is BMW's first ever twin turbo N96 motor they made. And I personally believe this is the strongest thing that this car has and why I personally purchased this car. It is an N54 motor. A lot of people say it's unreliable. A lot of people say it's reliable, but you can make a lot of power with this motor. With simple bolt-ons, as long as you take care of it, you really can do a lot with this motor. It is very capable. And well, it's the reason why I purchased this car, because the motor, it can do wonders. It is a 3.0 twin turbo inline six, and it makes about 300 horsepower and 300 torque. I believe this is like the enthusiast car of BMW. From 2007, this car, as you can see, does not have much technology. This one does not have the screen, but one thing it did have to have, which is why it shows this one, it does uh, bring paddle shifters. From the year, it's pretty old, but it does have a start and stop button, which is really, really cool. Down here, you have the little button to open up the trunk, kind of similar to yours, Elliot. The cup holders. This one works just fine, but if you can see this one, it goes bad on every single one of them. This one does not work. It does also come with this weird wooden trim. I don't know why that was a trend back then, but that's an era that no one is proud of and no one talks about. The, the interior is very, very simple. Uh, just a regular CD player. It does have the AC right here. You can control the right side, the left side, and this little switch right here, it actually lets you, if you want hot air coming out of these two vents, you can put it to red, or if you want colder air, you can put it to right, I mean to the left, and here you unlock the car, trash control off, hazard the cluster is very very simple and this car is really cool because it does not have an oil dipstick you actually have to go through the infotainment click on oil and there it shows you the oil level to be honest i personally don't like that i like having an oil dipstick just like my other cars but as you can see bmw was trying to be the leader when it comes down to technology and whatnot so they were implementing all these cool things <laughs> I definitely like how this car sounds too. One really cool thing that this car has is directional lighting. Do you know what that is? Yeah, directional. You turn the wheel. Exactly. I actually didn't know before I got this car. So, forever which way you turn the wheel, this bulb in the middle actually turns on. So, if you're turning a, if you're making a right, this bulb turns on. When you put it straight, it turns back off. It's actually really cool. You can see I have legroom. I was sitting comfortably as a, as a driver. I did not move the seat. And I have some leg room. And uh, if you guys know, I am actually eight foot five. So I mean, just imagine eight foot five, just specimen of a human just sitting back here. And I'm chilling. Do have an armrest that comes down. Ha <laughs> ha! Pretty cool. So as you can see, sadly, not much to talk about from the 335i, but I do think it's a very capable, pretty awesome car for the year for the money. But now I want to get into the performance of it. So let's go to the M3. The floor is very wet but we can do a couple accelerations on that car and then compare it to this car dude i don't want to scare you but there's a gigantic car right behind you not the fastest from factory it's not the fastest 
Um, it comes with, I believe, 300 horsepower and like 300 torque, which, you know, for 2007, that was, that's, that, that was a lot. But for now, and my other fast cars have kind of ruined this car for me because it's not fast. So that's what I don't like about it. It's not very fast from the factory. Gripping at all. Zero grip today. No wheels and tires have not gone on yet, so. I forgot to say, it has a sunroof too. Then we come to the trunk. I believe it's about the same amount of storage. There we go. Oh, whoa, you're automatic. I get you. You're automatic. I think I have a little more. Really? I think it's the same. It is actually really similar. Very, very, very similar storage, which is great. There we go. Let's go, baby. The steering is so much heavier than my car. This is twice as heavy, if not more. Two and a half times as heavy. It's a car worth buying for 6K, 07. Yes. If it runs well, yes. And I like the, you said you didn't like the wood, did you? You like the wood? I like the wood. The wood is great. Are you kidding me? All right, bro, we're gonna, we're gonna need to get out of the car now. All right, with that being said, if you had the money, would you get the $100,000 car? Or would you save up all that money and maybe buy this car? or other more cars. Let me know what you think. I think I already said in the beginning, but I do believe this is a great car for 6K and for the year. And I do believe this car's worth $100,000. Do you believe this car's worth $100,000? The owner, I'm asking the owner, yes or no? Yes. He does too. This is an incredible car, the tech, the speed, the looks, this is an incredible car. So for 100K, it's worth it. For 6K, I think it's worth it. Let me know what you guys think. I love you guys, peace. Why are you following me, dude? Stop following me, bro. Stop following me, dude. I can tell you my problems, meditating my silence. But I keep pushing my pen, rotating my. I'm so lonely. I have nobody. I'm a. Stylist. Brokenness feeling like seeing. I know breath low die. I love Used to be left on red. Now all the. Girls go holler. Not all the girls go follow. Here, you gotta catch it though. Nice.